Hello, hello, welcome. Um, this isn't really a tutorial. It's more of a, hey, did you know this thing exists? So before I even start in Photoshop, uh, let me show you how lasso fill should work if you're not familiar. Uh, it's in Procreate and other programs as well. Uh, I'm currently in Clip Studio, just a vanilla fresh install. And uh, this is how their lasso tool works. That's it, right? You just make shapes with a lasso and the program fills in the paint for you. And there's some cool little options over here for like opacity, blending mode, anti-aliasing, which is super helpful, and even stabilization, uh, which is also, of course, very helpful. Um, so now let's jump back over to Photoshop. So here we are back in Photoshop with a kind of generic military sci-fi type guy loaded up just to have something to work on. Um, let's head over here and grab our lasso fill tool. Um, yeah, there, there's not one. Yeah, Photoshop still doesn't have a lasso fill, which is kind of a disgrace, but okay, so what do we have? Can we approximate the effect? Can we maybe gain some fancy new features at the same time? Uh, it turns out we can. So head over here to the pen tool, uh, right click and make sure you have freeform pen tool. You'll see some options pop up here in the, in the tool menu bar. Uh, make sure it's set to shape, not path. Fill will be the color we need. We'll go over that in a minute. Stroke, we need to turn that off. So these are kind of hard to see, but it's this one. It means that there's no stroke. That's the effect we want. Uh, this stuff doesn't matter. Uh, make sure these are turned off. They probably will be. And we're ready to go. Okay, let's zoom in and lower the opacity so we can kind of see what we're doing. Go below the line work, grab the pen tool, and just trace the shape. Uh, it takes a pretty steady hand, but don't worry if you mess it up because we can always change it later. Okay, let's hide the line work for a second, and that's what we're left with. As you can see, this is not a ball of paint. It's not a it's not a raster paint mark. Uh, instead, we have a vector path that's filled with color. So what does that mean exactly? Uh, well, it means we get some serious upsides, actually. Uh, first, and this is pretty simple, uh, we can change the color of the fill by just double tapping the shape layer that Photoshop created right here. And there you go. Let's uh, make it kind of like a cooler thing. There you go. So that's a very simple way to change color. We can do all this with raster layers as well, you know, pretty simply by just locking their transparency and painting into it. But uh, I find this to be much better. Next, we can change the shape anytime. Uh, I'm not going to get in, into the specifics of how the pen tool functions and path editing and all of that. Uh, I will drop a link in the description for that. The general idea is you can select these nodes you see here by holding control and clicking on them. You'll see it's blue, which means it's selected. And then you can move them around to change the shape of this thing entirely. I actually deleted it there. Hold control. Right? You can grab this the bars, change the curve. The power and usefulness of that setup is hard to understate, honestly. If we were making shadow shapes instead of an armor piece, for instance, uh, we could change the lighting by just moving some of the nodes around. There's a lot of examples of things like this, and, and feel free to jump in the comments and share some you might have discovered or come up with on your own. I'd love to add them to my arsenal. Uh, I will quickly note though, let me undo these. Uh, if you lose your selection, right, if you go work someplace else and you come back and your nodes are gone. Uh, just with your pen tool selected, hold control and just click on the edge and you'll get your nodes back. Okay, cool. So we have a shape and we can change it. Let's uh, paint it up, right? Grab your brush and what happened? Well, you'll see that we can't directly paint on the shape. Uh, vectors and raster brushes don't interact like that, at least not in Photoshop. What we can do, however, is fall back on the old industry standard approach of uh, clipping masks. So we just make a new layer directly above our shape hold alt and hover between the shape layer and the new layer and you'll get that little arrow to create a clipping mask and then just grab your brush maybe grab a lower shade and you can just paint right in this is kind of a weird brush let's just grab something like a little more a little more soft there we go All right and of course you can still go back and change the base color of the shape itself which offers some pretty cool uh, happy accidents with color interactions and things like that. And then we're, we're kind of back to a basic workflow of adding shapes and painting on them as clipping masks and using that to add the lighting and shadow and material indications for each of the pieces of the illustration. So what we're left with is effectively a lasso fill, uh, albeit a little janky, 
but also kind of powerful too, right? In fact, that's not even everything. We can keep it going. So let's hide the paint for a moment. And let's retitle this gradient. Um, so with our shape layer selected here, go back to our pen tool and go back to our menu bar options up at the top. Uh, these are still live. All of these are editable and they will re be reflected in the shape that we made. So let's start with fill for like an easy example. Um, we had it currently filled to just be like a solid color, right? But if we go over here to gradient, look at that. So we can adjust these colors to be a little more attractive, do a fall off that's a little cooler just by tapping these little squares here below the gradient. And we'll do a kind of a, a top light situation. And there you go. And this little slider here, you can rotate that around to change which direction the light's coming from, right? And there we have kind of some automatic lighting going on. And of course you can change the, the type of gradient and all that depending on the shape you're doing. And using this, we can do some, some pretty effective block in of some like early lighting passes, right? And it's all non-destructive, okay? So as you're working, you know, you go about your business and change whatever, you come back, you double tap this, and there you go. You're right back to changing the gradient however you want. And of course your, your paint layer is still sitting there ready to be set to some type of blend mode, adjust the opacity, whatever. It can introduce textures, more colors, weathering, whatever kind of mark you want to add. Uh, but we can also keep it going non-destructively as well. So let's go back to this base shape again and hit Control J to duplicate it. Clip it to the original. So now we just have two copies of the same thing sitting on top of each other. And we'll call this one Texture. And now we'll go back to our pen tool, head to our option bar at the top, and instead of fill, let's do texture. Um, that's not a great one. You can fill this with any kind of texture. Uh, you can make your own, you can download them, whatever you want. Um, let's choose this kind of random noise texture. Uh, we'll change the scale here. Something like that. Uh, angle doesn't really matter, but we'll, we'll adhere to the same lighting angle, so it's kind of a top down. Something like that. Okay, and then we can change the layer mode to whatever whatever looks cool. Uh, I want it to be a little more subtle, so I'm going to go soft light. And now we're beginning to add levels of material complexity non-destructively, right? This is non-destructive. I can tap it and change it all I want. This is non-destructive. I can tap it and change it all I want. The shape itself, let me zoom in, grab my pen tool again, is also non-destructive. I can get my nodes back. And as I change them, everything that I was changing via the fill options sticks around. Let's go ahead and undo that. And we can keep it going too. Uh, let's head up to the stroke setting. We have the original gradient layer selected and the pen tool selected, so we still have our option bar. Uh, let's go to stroke and uh, we'll choose texture. That might be weird and fun. Um, we don't see much immediately, but if we go to the size setting here, which is currently one pixel, and size that up, there you go. A little too much maybe. Uh, and we can use this to add, of course, uh, line work using a solid color instead. Let's use like kind of dark brown here, uh, make the line a little, a little less weighty. And there you go. Zoom back out. And you can use that to add line work. Uh, it doesn't work for everything, right? Some, some things will look really weird with this line work pushed throughout the entire design. But uh, in some cases, it will look really cool. And of course, you can change the type of stroke as well. And there are custom versions you can download for this too. And remember, at this stage, this is all still non-destructive, okay? So um, you can still bring back your, your painting that you want to do or uh, make a new layer. And you can uh, bring selections into the mix and you know gradients and whatnot to add kind of, that's too dark. Add a kind of sky gradient hitting the top plane and whatnot. You can use brushes however you like. Go in and add maybe some kind of um, some kind of pock marking. Some, some damage and whatnot, hiding around, etc. And of course we have in this case like some other stuff going on, some stickers and whatnot. Um, you can handle those however you want. I'm going to go ahead and choose a color, kind of a dingy yellow. Um, make sure my stroke is off, I don't want that in this case. Um, and then you can just go in there and begin dropping those as shape layers as well, if you want. You know, doesn't matter. If that's not how you want to approach it, you can just switch back to using brush. Grab 
have the color you need and paint them in manually. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the line, which I don't want because I have line work already. Bring the line work back up so we can see a little better. And there you go. Almost all of what's going on there is handled by a non-destructive texturing of a vector shape. And it can be pushed a lot further than I did it as well. We could keep adding these things, these base copies. We can also use those for any type of light we want to add too. And all the stuff will retain its editability throughout the process until we select it all and hit Control E to mash it down. And then it becomes a single object um, and you can now paint and erase out of it as no longer a vector. So undo that. And of course, keep in mind, this is just one use case. Um, you're free to use this for any type of coloring. Uh, it's really good for cell shading or like cartoon style flat coloring and things like that. You're also free to draw with it, but it doesn't work quite like Clip Studio for that or Procreate or anything else. It's too easy to drag other pieces when you're, when you're kind of like trying to draw over things and whatnot. So you need to just kind of plan ahead, make sure you don't hit a node when you're drawing and know like, okay, I want hair to flay out this way. So I'll start over here. And do some bangs on the side of the head and the chin and all that, right? So it just takes an extra layer of thought. But at the same time, you get some added flexibility too, right? Because you can, you can go in, after you make some little drawing of some kind, you can start editing it. You can start deciding, well, I don't really, I guess that shape didn't work out how I wanted it. And you can, you can grab all of these shapes that it's making all these layers and either group them up if you want to keep them separate for some reason, or just uh, hit control E and, and mash them down into one shape, right? And it's just really easy to keep track of. And you're, you're still free to grab your pen tool and go in and select the individual shapes, they're retained, and you can go about changing the various designs of your shapes. Uh, and this is, this is super useful for, for people who are trying to learn how to style shapes and things like that. It's, it's hard to really undersell the, the power there. And that's about it, really. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and let this video wrap by doing a time lapse of the full process for coloring this guy up using the same technique and maybe some other little tricks along the way. So feel free to stick around and watch that if it's of interest to you. And feel free to hit up the comment section with any questions you might have, or you can reach out to me directly, that's fine too. Uh, thanks for watching, and as always, hit like if you dig it, and subscribe for more of the same. Thanks.